Yeah, yeah you just and then I'll just say a few more words. Actually, could you hand? Would you mind handing those? Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. About seven of them. That's when I just started teaching. Hey, folks. Um, if you're involved with the film session, it's probably better if you come over this side a little bit because um, I'm using my own mini speakers and there, there is a short um, piece of film involved, as it is a film session. Uh, this should be coming round, so if you're interested in having access to all the files that I'm showing and a lot more beside, because uh, I've got examples from French, German and Spanish, then uh, please put your name, school, uh, print your email address because uh, uh, I do find some of the spellings quite hard um, and which languages you're interested in seeing the samples of that would be really helpful so if I can pass that round another lady's got another one I um, don't know where my other pen's gone Ooh, can I nick a pink pen? <laughs> thanks <coughs> if I can pass that round thanks um, Right. Just yep. Yep. Oh, God, I've just seen a familiar word which takes me back 30 years. Bibliobus. And most of you won't <laughs> remember that. But I've still got the boxes. Have you? Yes, and they were a great resource for, for reading out loud and acting and uh, comprehension. So you were involved in acting. I had a, a more recent uh, link with Steve because uh, we've been buying into his A level units at French and it's interesting to see now that that's developed into uh, into German as well with Spanish maybe on the horizon. Spanish, that? Spanish is at the point of delivery. Yes. Um, the lady who's doing it sent me the first first pages. I'll, I'll, I'll use one or two examples. Yeah, from but I can really re recommend them as excellent <coughs> resources and Steve is excellent at coming back to you immediately if there's any technological panic as happened to me at the beginning of September when I couldn't get into the site. It was immediately resolved and uh, so um, we're looking forward to hearing what you've got to say Steve so thank okay. you very much. So uh, yeah I taught for 20 years before I moved on to working with a technology company around education in 2000 but uh, I've kept up tutoring A-level students all the time since then and uh, as my job at the LLEA um, <laughs> became ever more insecure I decided to boost the, the role of uh, the stuff I was doing and uh, producing A-level resources and uh, over the last couple of years I've started doing more CPD and uh, a lot of it has been based on feedback from the students I've been tutoring and many of them have been from the Welsh board so it's interesting to be here today so I'll be interested in any feedback. Um, so the, the, if you put your name down with, as I said earlier, with your email address I'll send you a login to be able to access all the files. Um, most of the things are created specially for this and aren't in the uh, saleable materials. Um, one, or one or two examples are there, but um, uh, just a quick starter. Uh, what is a film? How much is there in it? What film is that? Say, quel film? Welcher film is das? Just a quick starter. Anyone recognise that film? Some of Amelie. Wait, wait. Is that? And this film? No, it's not Welsh board films necessarily, that first one happened to be. <laughs> Avatar. <laughs> I think Avatar. Okay. Is that? What is this film? A kinder film. A film for enfants. Bombi. Is that? Jaws. Don de la Mer. That's it. Um, is that? Plus triste? Traurig? Schindler's List, yeah. Okay, just, just a quick starter. Just a reminder of films uh, that uh, they tend to have a few points made in some detail. Last night, uh, when I got here, I went to see the film, um, I've forgotten the name of it already. <laughs> The idea was that it's the imitation game, <coughs> the imitation oh, game, yeah. uh, which is about the um, uh, mathematician, scientist Alan Turing, 
and um, and, I, and I, I watched it in terms of what what does that tell me? Because I was reading the the Welsh examiner's reports uh, for the last summer's exams, and particularly for the German, it said the students had obviously been taught masses of background information <coughs> about the uh, DDR time when the wall was still up. Uh, and they weren't talking about the film so much. And I was thinking, well, how much would I have known about Turing from this? And if I'd have read, I, I had actually read the biography of Turing that it was based on. I thought, how much would I have come away with? And if someone had taught me all that detail, would I then start talking about all that background information uh, rather than talking about the film? And I thought, if I was an impressionable sixth format, yeah, I probably would, because I would be wanting to demonstrate that I'd taken on board all my teachers' knowledge and I wanted to get it out there. And in actual fact that we have got to talk about or write about the film itself that we're seeing. So, um, one of the things uh, I think is very important is <coughs> just getting the right version or versions of the film. It's great to have the uh, version with subtitles, better if it's the one that uh, you can remove the <coughs> subtitles from. But uh, I think alongside that, you also need really to have, these are getting very battered now because I keep showing them to people, the um, editions of them that have got um, a text on it in French as well. So that um, you can play it with French text, which is not exactly what's said in the film, but at least it gives an indication of the way the meaning is going. So the La N, there's a 10 year old, a 10 year since the making version that's still, that's still available. Lots of stuff on <coughs> the making of, talking to the director, etc. Uh, Les Choristes, I've, I've just chosen some of the more popular films, which I know Les Choristes is the most popular. You've got Baratier talking over the uh, whole film in this, talking about how it was made, uh, how, how he made certain decisions about directing it. Uh, which makes the, the film, certainly as you go further into it, as interest may start to wane, it, it keeps it up there because you're teaching them something new. And um, Amélie particularly, Le Fabuleux Destin d'Amélie, um, that's, um, I thought at one time, oh, why do I bother teaching that? It's so trivial. And then you actually watch it through, <laughs> uh, listen to the director's comments and think, yeah, this is a real film, film's film, because uh, he, he's not written it based on some book. It's, it's pouring himself into, into this film. And it eventually concludes by saying that um, he is Amélie, in fact, which is a frightening thought. Uh, <coughs> not as good looking as Audrey Tutu, anyway. So um, those editions, I think it's important to try and get hold of. Uh, you can tend to get them off Amazon France uh, or whatever not amazingly expensive. But I think it's important because we're talking about getting into the film. We want to get behind that protective shield of the uh, subtitles, which are often even Americanized. I think La N, <coughs> the subtitle one I've got, it's sort of got French, uh, uh, American swear words and things, which, um, which kind of alienates you from it in many ways. So, <clears throat> I think an important thing, and uh, quite a few of the insights I've got into this recently have been by dint of uh, teaching my own um, niece, uh, helping her out in her A2 year. And um, what, uh, what, have I just missed one? Uh, how do you go back? B. I don't know. C not. Um, one of the things uh, I think is very important is to capture the first impression of the film. Uh, because it's only there once. I went to see um, that film last night. I'll probably never see it again. And um, I'll probably talk about it to people, either recommending it or not recommending it. That's what we normally do with the film. We don't really usually go into a huge detail if we're not studying um, uh, media studies. So the first thing to do is maybe look at posters, possibly posters for different markets, America, within France, other countries, and compare the message that comes across when you look 
at the, at the poster, even before they see it. And uh, they can then uh, kind of give, um, give some sort of idea of whether it's likely to be uh, pessimistic, optimistic, some particular societal thing that's going on at the moment. And um, when we start to watch it, <coughs> uh, Ruth, my uh, niece, I'll mention occasionally, said, oh, it's annoying because Miss just kept jumping in front of it all the time, saying this, that, or the other about it. We didn't get a chance to watch it. All we got was, and you've got the time, you've got half a term or a term to do it. And uh, I think if you, if you really want to get a personal reaction from the student, um, particularly, say, if you're doing AQA, which is more geared towards that sort of thing, uh, most of you would be doing WJC. But getting that um, uncensored sort of first impression is important. So one of the things um, you can use if you want that uh, I've done is uh, <coughs> first reaction review builder. I should be flicking on and off occasionally uh, looking at these uh, various things. Uh, I don't know if you can see that very well, that's why. Um, so I've kind of peppered it with uh, useful a level -E type um, expressions like envoyant le nom, envoyant la fiche du film, je m'attendais à voir, for the talking about the poster. And uh, having seen the poster, whether they think at the end that the um, poster actually is applies to it, really. I uh, haven't done this one for German, but if anyone wants to try and adapt it, they're welcome to or Spanish, um, talking about what it's all about, il s'agit de, um, German would be as handelt sich um, or whatever, positive impressions, dès le début j'ai été ému, frappé, impressionné par, whatever it may be, it may be negative impressions, dès le début j'ai été déçu, surpris, choqué, ennuyé, à l'égard de, talking about the structure and maybe meaning of the film, um, all something that you could capture after they've seen the, uh, the, the film for the first time without your intervention, without you explaining anti-Semitism or, or if it was German, uh, the uh, revolutionary uh, groups that you get in uh, modern Germany, or used to get. I think they're still there probably. So that's a template to help you try to capture that. And um, moving on, so that's the sort of thing it would be nice for them to do, a presentation for their uh, peers, uh, orally or, or written, whichever you decide, or both. And um, <coughs> a useful thing to do as well there, I think, is to um, give it a star rating and then you can do things like go on to the, uh, for French it's Allociné, there's a fabulous site called allocinema.fr. Uh, I was looking for German, Spanish and I couldn't find anything that had the same um, public involvement. You've got hundreds of reviews, at different levels from one to five on Allociné. So you can actually compare what people find good, bad or indifferent or both about, uh, about the film. So. Um, I thought um, when they've done their own review, it's quite a good thing to do to, to then pull together. You'll probably want to annotate them because some uh, and not choose one that you use um, <coughs> uh, very um, inaccurate language. So, for instance, here's a set on uh, la n. I'll just make it a bit bigger. Uh, zoom two hundred. And um, you'll see a five star, and then three stars, where the uh, praise is more mitigated, and then right down to people who think it's uh, it's rubbish. Uh, somewhere one star. Oh là, que de quatre étoiles, c'est pas normal ça. Suis-je le seul à avoir remarqué que Casso Au-delà de ces belles prises de vue, n'utilise que des stéréotypes pour défendre ce qui nous apparaissent. Bon, bon, bon. 
So um, a whole range of things that you can use. And um, in the uh, thing that I've handed around, which I meant to keep a copy of if there's a spare anywhere, um, I suggested that by dint of um, using those um, star ratings, you can, when the kids come to write in the essays, they can say things like, Certains accusent le film d'être bon, plein de stéréotypes, mais moi je... So certain people accuse the film of being made up, uh, full of stereotypes. So you, you've actually got, uh, got something to base that on, selon les revues de Allo Cine, and uh, the equivalent in Spanish or German. So it's a useful thing to do. Apart from that, it's uh, very good reading comprehension. Assume, assume you haven't chosen a loather full of mistakes, because uh, there are some appalling mistakes. Um, <clears throat> so um, I don't think, uh, I don't know whether I jumped the slides, but uh, <clears throat> better tell in a second. Oh yeah, I, I did, so I'll just say this now. <clears throat> After that first showing, when you're capturing the uh, initial impression, uh, I think at that stage, the next time through, either removing the subtitles or using the version with French subtitles, the German version for her, uh, so that um, <coughs> there's, there is a prompt in, in the language. The other thing, which I shall bring up uh, a bit later, is if you can access the uh, script of the film. That's very important too. <coughs> I'll mention that a bit more in a few minutes. So, <coughs> I started doing summaries of films because I took on a, a, a student who didn't seem to have much knowledge at all of anything in French. <coughs> and she'd been asked to study Amélie in class. And she couldn't remember anything about it, didn't know anything about it, really. So I did a gap, a gap summary of the film to help her in, because she really couldn't do present tense verbs, etc. And started doing those for the uh, Welsh board. But it has been something that people have valued, to have summaries of the film, so that um, as they're teaching it, they can uh, refer the kids back, they're practicing the grammar, at the same time as reminding themselves of the content of the film. It's implanting uh, vocabulary about the <coughs> um, nature of the film, um, which they may not be getting just by watching it, because the vocabulary used to describe the narrative may well be different to the language used within the film, especially in something like La N, where most, uh, most of it is slang, etc. So, uh, Hot off the press, are there any Hispanists in the room? Yeah, uh, I'll show you a, a Spanish one to show, show our, our eclectic nature of our offering. This is hot off the press from <coughs> Dr. Esther forgotten uh, Torre de la Vilga, Vilgas de la Torre, uh, who's writing the Spanish stuff for me. So the idea of the summary, uh, which we've done for all the Welsh boards, works is to have summaries of each sequence with the verbs <coughs> in the infinitive form students have to uh, provide them and there's a marking scheme um, to use with it. That's the way we've done it. If you're doing a film um, they haven't done before there are plenty of summaries out there pretty easy to copy and paste them into the word and change all the verbs into uh, infinitives or whatever. So um, that's, um, that's just one way of building up the knowledge of the film. Because <coughs> although the uh, uh, exam board is uh, emphasizing the fact that it's analysis and um, evaluation that are required, and that's often not happening <coughs> for a variety of reasons, that does rely on a really extremely good knowledge of the film itself. So <coughs> another way to provide that knowledge is antouchable, which a lot of, it was mentioned in the examiner's report as being popular for the oral because it's not on the list. It's just having a set of questions and that could 
<coughs> relate to the techniques used by the film, the narrative, getting the kids to ask their opinions, bringing in certain questions like what would you have done, what might he have done, etc. <coughs> using some more analytical types of questioning. So the idea of giving questions to work through with, I think, is it's quite important. You'll obviously, you'll obviously be splitting it up into bits as you go on after the first viewing, but, and you'll be doing those things orally maybe, stopping the frame and asking them what they think might happen next. What is, well, I know, won't they, they've seen it. Um, but um, backing it up with <coughs> written questions, certainly if they're doing it for the oral. So the knowledge of the film is really extremely important, I think. And <coughs> another thing that people really seem to like is <coughs> to have the um, uh, pics from the film, screen captures. And um, if we go through this, um, I should think most of you have seen Au revoir les enfants, I mean, imagining. <coughs> and um, what's. Um, what I tend to do, I haven't done it on this one, is animate the top uh, sentence <coughs> so that it comes in. The students can try and describe it first, <coughs> what's happening. And then within the um, PowerPoints to put in present participles, things like après être arrivé, all that sort of stuff, demonstrating different ways of starting a clause so that you can, you can build more complexity in. So you're not always starting uh, clauses with a uh, subject. So <coughs> the way to create those is very, very straightforward. Does anyone know how to do screen captures? <coughs> yeah, it's um, all you have to do, put your film in, into a laptop. Um, if it's got a uh, power DVD, Cyberlink power DVD, which is often on laptops. So if you ask in school for one that's got one, all you have to do with that is to press C at any point and it saves the picture you're on to a, a folder. Now I'm not gonna go through in detail because there's a lot to get through, but on the IT, if, if you get the information for logging in, there's a sheet called IT issues and it tells you how to do that. So you can either do it with Cyberlink um, DVD uh, player, or you can do it with one called VLR, VLR Free uh, Media Player. You just have to do a couple of adjustments in that one, and it tells you how to do it in the file I've got, and there's, I've even done an animation that links to it. But basically, see, see, so you're capturing all the bits you want. And then all you do in PowerPoint is insert um, photo album and it whizzes them all into a PowerPoint in one go. So it does mean that you can whiz through the film after the first time through much more quickly and so that, uh, so that they remember the more little details in it as well as sort of the, the big issues. So, okay. Oh, sorry. Um, Knowledge-wise, then, I think um, that's very important. I think one of the, uh, the um, Welsh boards, very similar to AQA, asks for the, um, you to analyse, particularly the motivations of characters and about their character, why they are the way they are. And um, I said earlier about having the script available, I put some little samples of scripts in the, um, in the examples. If you get into the script, it is much easier when you're teaching the students, when you're starting to do essays, when you're starting to deal with particular topics, to, to find examples. Uh, if you're trying to combine looking through the film, scratching through the film quickly to find the examples, you never find them. The script is so helpful. I've done those full versions for Amélie, Le Choriste, and La Haine. Uh, you can't just use the, those German uh, versions of the script because they're the screenplays before the actors were set loose on it and started improvising because the text of La Haine 
what's actually said, I had to dictate through it to ages, it took weeks, on and off. And um, it's totally different to what's in the official screenplay that Kassovitz originally written. His is much more conservative, theirs is much freer, although not, still not street language as such, so the viewers say. So from having the script, then you're, you're really into the action. It's like doing a play at that point. You've got the filmic side, which you can discuss, the PowerPoint, the images, etc., and other things that I'll show you later. But to get inside the characters, I did some really nice exercises with Ruth and her friends that worked, worked really well. And uh, that was to take examples of people's character, and those are all online, and there'll be links to those you can see. So getting quotations about what Vince says to show, because he's probably the key character of that N, getting the quotations, saying what the situation is where that quotation occurs, and then I put them into um, an online program called Quizlet. Uh, it's very easy to use. If we've got time, anyone wants to see it later, quizlet.com. Um, Greg mentioned Memrise. Well, Quizlet is very, very similar <coughs> in that um, you, put the, you create an account and you put the text into boxes, save it, and then you can tell the kids where it is and they can do it. And that's got an app for it, so it's, it's a nice little program. And the beauty of it is, this worked really nicely. It was nice to see the games going on, the cutting out and matching on cards. Well, off Quizlet, you can, they can be doing those things online, but also you can print it off from PDF so that you can do, laminate them and do matching activities. What, what side of uh, Vince's character is this statement saying? And unless uh, uh, the, the girls, the Ruth and her friends, had ages doing that, saying uh, with a pile of cards, work, working out whether it's Uber, Vince, or Said. And, uh, and then saying what the situation was. It gives them, really makes them think about the actual content of the film. And when it comes down to analysis, it would be all too easy just to talk about the violent side of uh, that end, because visually it is very violent, stark and violent, guns being pointed in all directions, etc. But when you listen to the actual language of that end, it's all storytelling, joke telling, talking proverbs. Two thirds of uh, the old guy talking about his friend who uh, got left behind and, and froze to death from the tra uh, train to uh, Siberia or whatever it was. So it's all about storytelling when you actually look at the, the, um, the textual side of it. So to an analyze the film, very, very important to have, have the script. You may not be able to access the script that easily. You can get the subtitle files in the foreign language offline. They're called .srt files. You can get them, but again, they're not, they're not particularly accurate because the um, people doing the subtitles chop it right down. So it's probably as quick and easy just to take some key scenes and dictate them down yourself. Or you may find them in some of the, the uh, other stuff online. But I, th I think it's really important to have the um, to have that. And while we're talking about character, a couple of things we've done. Uh, I nicked uh, this idea off um, a guy called uh, Rob, Rob, Rob Rod Hares, who uh, worked for the exam board. So, um, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. I should have forgotten this one. <laughs> so now I'll come back to that in a second. I've just completely forgotten I've done it. Um, character, character adjectives. Character adjectives. Is there somewhere? Um, no, well, I'll show you this one. Uh, this, there is a template for this, and what I've done for this is to talk about the distance travelled by characters in the film. Because if you're going to evaluate them, most films have a journey, don't they? A very, very seldom is it that a person at the start of the film, the main protagonist, is the same as they are at the end. So, for instance, in Antushabla, which many of you will have seen, both um, Philippe and... Jesus. That's the one. <laughs> at the end, 
they both they both kind of understand each other's point of view. In La N, Vince has this amazing journey from when all he wants to do is kill a cop, which he proves singularly unable to do. At the end, he hands over the gun to Uber and says, voila. And then ironically, he gets a bullet through his head a minute later. Uh, but um, that journey, uh, I'm suggesting that you try and get the kids to capture. On first sight, how do we see them at the start? Uh, some quotations. Papa, je m'en fous, je vous déteste. This is Au revoir les enfants. Um, what do other people think of him? Uh, what do other people say about him in the course of the film? Uh, your opinion about the way he acts? And then going through the film, get them to try to um, get quotations and uh, thoughts about the way things actually change in the course of the film. So, very straightforward, very easy to do. You don't need to uh, try too hard to do that. Um, ah, here's the adjectives. So for the adjective side of things, <coughs> I've given you. These are in. It, these are actually in my materials, but I've just given the first first page, which is uh, so giving some. Uh, again, it's like you're saying, uh, I'm banning super. If I'm talking about a film uh, to someone and they say to me, "Oh, what was it like?" I said, oh, it was a bit crap, actually. Uh, it was. Uh, I saw Fury a couple of weeks ago. Oh, it's a tank battle. It's uh, it's uh, it's really violent. And uh, but actually, I quite liked it. I liked what, <laughs> but I didn't really say much about it. So to actually get them to to go outside the comfort zone and to use a, a wider range of adjectives to describe people's character: sort of disdainful, unpleasant, gifted, frightening, cheeky, egotistical. Faithful, proud, you know, whole whole range of things that they uh, probably won't have picked up in the language, certainly not uh, AS or not most of them anyway. So the idea is really that they go through, attribute those adjectives to particular characters and say what level they display of them. And the analytical bit comes in saying um, uh, how they demonstrate that. Uh, so and so rival qu'il est dédaigneux uh, quand il uh, whatever. So and so reveals his disdain when he or by doing this, that, and the other. So you can do a lot on the character of people to um, to develop the the analytical side. Oh, I keep doing that every time. Um, right. Oh. Am I useless or not, honestly? So, uh, using the film script, building character, developing grammar. So that was clearly an example of developing grammar because we all know, mm. looking through even A2 essays, that however hard you try, they, they do seem to miss getting the um, adjectives agreeing. And... Uh, uh, I've, de I've developed quite a range of things, uh, grammar in context, but I developed one uh, to come out to talk to people about, about discussing something very important, which is the motivations of the characters. And something that I always found quite difficult to teach was all that range of verbs, like whether it's décider de, um, commencer à, uh, se résoudre à, a whole range of uh, more complex verbs that are followed by preposition or no preposition plus infinitive. So um, I tried to come up with something that brought in some thinking skills and the, the sort of idea I came up with and you can adapt this if you like, uh, I'll just zoom into it, is to um, <coughs> you basically Look at some character adjectives again. This is la N again. Uh, being a bitter, a sullen, vengeful, impetuous, talkative person, whatever. Vince Hubert Said starts to, hesitates to 
um, take the risk of perseveres in substinea. Um, the Im immediately you see the word substine, you think of Vince because he's very obstinate in his des apparent desire to kill a cop. And uh, you've got, um, what you've got there is the potential then of doing some fine tuning around meaning to, to then finish off some sentences. So the idea really is just to give them some starter sentences and then get the, and t so to put the thinking skills into operation because you are talking about the motivations so you're practicing that really important point about uh, verb plus infinitive at the same time as you're developing some thinking skills and then if you want you can um, use those to start the sentence with and I d I'm not sure how you do this in German which uh, Structured use you've um, German because I haven't done that yet. Um, on subsi no idea qui veut tuer un policier, Vince réussi à aliéner ses deux amis. So it should be ses deux amis. Uh, so by persisting in saying that he wants to kill a policeman, Vince succeeds in alienating his two friends. So we've actually got two of those verbs plus preposition plus infinitive in there. So I, I think. Things like that are a nice way of just moving the language forward. Because I think that's the difficult thing, trying to keep everything together. The idea of this really is to, as far as possible, to do several things in one go, to keep, uh, keep, them, keep them going forward. You're practicing content, you're practicing language, you're developing and refining language. <coughs> so. Word sentence paragraph level, this is the sort of stuff that started to come up in the um, literacy hour uh, in England anyway. I don't know whether you guys did. But one of the things that came up in the examiner's reports was those scathing comments. Few, few candidates seem to know the word for such and such. And again, I would go to that N and say, uh, I don't if you, I'm assuming people have seen that N. All films have certain words that, um, if you don't know them, you'd really be struggling to paraphrase them. So in La N, for instance, Vince, when he finds out his friend Abdel has died in hospital, <coughs> feels the need to go and blow out a policeman. And um, he imagines in his head shooting uh, what looks like a policeman, but is in fact a traffic warden who wears a dark uniform. Now, if you just call them policier, you'd be missing the entire point. So you really do need to know the word contractuel. And what, um, what I suggest uh, that people do, it's uh, just uh, an idea, and the students can do that themselves, is to build up a, a hit list of key words from the film. And I think, I think I've done that here. Uh, yeah. That end. Au revoir les enfants, I've done an example from there as well. And just putting the, um, the words with a definition. And the idea really was to also get them to reuse qui, que, and don. And things like dans lequel as well, if, if you want. But uh, they're not things that most students do, uh, average students do all that well. So by Again, you can une émeute, une exposition, un flingue, um, l'interphone, a magnetoscope, because they don't exist in kids' worlds these days, and, and uh, a merguez. Uh, uh, if you just say saucisse, you know, it's not that r right type of sausage. Uh, probably not the most important point, but uh, le RER, do they know what that is? And tableau, do they know the word for painting? Will they just say une image, which isn't quite right, you know? The videur, the bouncer, thug, le voyou. So, again, you're practicing key vocabulary and you're also uh, getting the uh, uh, important, useful grammatical point across, <coughs> hopefully. And again, it's something you can cut up and make laminated cards with to play with. They do really like that. The six, six formers. 
like it as much as anyone else. They like a change. They don't like everything on PowerPoint. And you know, the, uh, you're talking about your um, hot seat, etc. That sort of thing as well. You know, the whole whole range of activities to build into it. So, so I keep referring back to you. I should have asked, shouldn't I? So you were happy. With that. <laughs> Um, sentence, uh, sentence level activities, well we've already looked at, at some of those. Uh, one of the um, things looking through the AS level uh, examiner's reports, because I did something on that in the webinar last week, um, or a couple of weeks ago, uh, was that uh, the kids really couldn't cope that well with suki and suku. So, um, the sentence level, I, I did this a while ago, and um, it's the, the idea of it really is to, and you wouldn't do this all the time, but it's giving the journey of a statement. So it takes a simple truism about the film. Um, Vince shows himself to be aggressive, <coughs> and it could be Amélie shows herself to be whatever. And the idea is to take that through from a very simple statement to uh, putting that statement in a time concept. So using things like having heard the news of the death of, or as soon as someone upsets him, during the visit to the hospital, um, showing a time frame for it, then showing Contradiction. Contradiction demonstrates some form of analysis. Um, so, malgré le fait que, plus subjunctive, quoi que, bien que, sentences with that. So, you're taking them on a little journey just to show them that they can <coughs> take statements whichever way they like. Again, different sorts of construction, the après avoir type and the uh, ayons and the on plus present participle. Uh, cause and effect, a cause de, etc. Cause and effect, leading through to uh, suki and suku somewhere. Where's it gone? Uh, oh, there, that's the one. Yeah, so um, you can end up with a sentence that, um, in fact, I haven't used. Oh, yeah, you've got a suki there. Um, I, haven't used, I usually use sukis and sukas all the time in this one on the left. Just demonstrating how you can go from a simple statement to something full on. That probably, um, if you look at half a dozen paragraphs of 60 words, uh, you're looking at um, uh, these types of more complex sentences being half a paragraph, more or less. So, useful. Um, Paragraph level, which is the last one, uh, I'm not, I have got some things on that, but I'll just discuss it because I, um, I think it's important <coughs> that almost as soon as you start doing the film, you start talking to the kids, and it will be clear why I'm saying this when you get to the examiner's reports you'll see in a minute. Uh, start writing paragraphs with them because in effect a paragraph is a mini essay and you can do a paragraph fairly quickly. Your first sentence of the paragraph you tell them introduces it, makes your point, and you can have another couple of sentences then which evidence it, give illustrations of it, develop, uh, that, that key word, develop your thoughts, <laughs> that's part of analysis. So you can do that sort of thing right from the word go. I don't think there's much use for most kids just setting them an essay straight off and they fail and Get them, get them to do paragraphs, write paragraphs with them so they know what they are. Get them used to the fact that it, 60 or 70 words is a paragraph. They're going to need half a dozen paragraphs if they're going to get enough points in to their essay. And going through it with them and sharing the pain is the way to do that. I remember doing that thinking, oh God, I've no, no idea what I'm going to write about this. So if you share the pain with them, you'll see that it does come out eventually. So, um, refining language, I actually covered, I covered that, uh, really, the screenshots thing. 
when you've got a load of screenshots, you can really push any grammatical points you like because you can you can put in text that uh, you can put in present tense across the top with the picture, or you can do past tenses, or you can do conjunctions and things, um, starting clauses off with the on press present past so was plays avoir etc. Whatever fits. Uh, and I've got sets of those that you will have access to for Au revoir les enfants, La haine, Amélie, Les choristes, El labyrintho del fauno. I think, <laughs> I think I've done it already. And uh, Die fetten Jahre sind vorbei for German. Uh, I've done all those, and obviously the co it's copyright stuff, so I can't sell it. So I've just done them to demonstrate to people, and you'll be able to access those if, if you want to. But they're not sort of finished articles, they're things that you can adapt to push whatever you, you want. Okay. Right, this is a, uh, something that um, I've been using quite um, frequently, uh, and we probably haven't got, what, how are we for time, quarter of an hour? Yes. Yeah. Uh, on YouTube, you have got uh, access to um, a series of programs called, I'll show you how to Google it, and then you'll be able to get it for yourselves. There are links to it on my materials, so YouTube, and um, Leçon de Cinema. There are 14 programs covering a wide range of te film techniques. And they're done in such a way that the story itself shows the techniques. So you things like, for, uh, uh, unfortunately this is all French. I tried to find something like this for German Spanish. It may be out there, but I haven't found it. So I'll just show you a sample of it. But if you look down the, if you look down the side, I'll just put the sound on. Well, we asked you to build us a yacht cast base. Right, wait a second. Just down the side, you can show, you can see the um, other examples. The subjective view, um, s um, slow motion, but you've got things like music, and he demonstrates a piece of film with and um, without music, showing that it gives no atmosphere, with a sad music theme, and with a sort of thriller type thing to show that the same pictures can shows and same words completely change according to to what's there so i'll just give you a little sample and you can watch those for yourself uh probably because the sound's not going to be amazing i don't think Vous êtes là. Excusez-moi, je, je travaillais toute la nuit, j'ai peu dormi. Par respect pour vous, j'ai demandé à ma maquilleuse personnelle de me faire un petit soin du visage. Vous savez, cette jeune femme a des mains exceptionnelles. Et grâce à elle, j'ai une, une mine superbe. En Faites quelle valeur de cadre là euh, Je suis en gros plan. Eh ouais, non, 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 eh, plan alors, s'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît, j'ai très peu dormi. Allez, venez, venez, suivez-moi. Dans la leçon de cinéma, je vais vous parler du cadrage. Le cadre, c'est tout ce que vous voyez à l'image. Uh, I've just been told I need to crack on, so you can watch that one for yourself, but they really are worth uh, watching. So, next stage uh, from there, and I've done some examples for you. The analyse de séquence is something very, very popular in French schools where they really take uh, cinema very seriously. And um, what I've done is create a sample, uh, a template for you to be able to do an analyse de séquence. You've got a blank template there to fill in. And after watching Le Son de Cinema, uh, about uh, close-ups, all the different types of shots, you can then get the students to 
take a scene apart. Something like a three to four minute scene. Talk about the music and its effect, the way it's interpreted by the actors, the themes in it, and then the different types of shot numbered. And it shows you there that uh, within, within something like um, uh, the restaurant scene in Au Voir les Enfants, a four minute thing, there are 32 separate shots all intricately woven together. So quite a useful activity to do, I think, and uh, one that uh, will help the kids understand how a film works. And remember, we're talking about film and here, moving on quickly, the re examiner's report on the essay emphasizes kids who plan their essays with a well-structured answer gain higher marks than those who plunge in without a plan. Okay? And the 400 words is very important, not to exceed it too much. German, it's very stark, and it said that um, <coughs> despite the fact that only two films were covered, um, people, kids were writing far too much about the background. I hope I've tried to encourage you into the idea that they do need to look into the film to get involved with the film, to analyse character, the film itself, etc. Uh, Ruth and her friends, just two or three weeks before the exam, it was still a short shopping list plan in English. They didn't get into the they hadn't got into the idea of using something like a mind map or as I call them spider diagram. I think I call them that. Uh, my French teacher taught us how to plan. Uh, here's a German example. And the front of there's examples of various uh, there's one for each of the more popular films. And basically the key thing is to Take the title, obviously, analyze, uh, analyze the meaning of, this, uh, of the, these themes for the film. Two themes, not one theme. Very, very important that you get them to really do those things carefully. And if there are two themes to plan, do one of the themes at the top and one of the themes at the bottom. I haven't done it on this one, but uh, I actually... Um, numbered the way my ideas came together using a plan like this and they were all over the place because the ideas didn't necessarily follow on one after the other. If the student starts to write it from their shopping list and they haven't thought about the ideas, when the ideas suddenly come to them, which they may, they've nowhere to go because they're in the middle of it. So they're doomed to writing in a circular, repetitive way. I taught an Oxbridge student last year, the last two or three weeks, she was writing about the Collies, and she was still doing that. She's very bright, she got into Oxbridge, but she couldn't plan a way out, she didn't plan. So I had to teach her how to do this spider diagram approach. Uh, this really, the plan here with six boxes is just, it, it is irrelevant. They should be planning in pencil or pen on paper, because that's where they're going to have to do it. Writing their essays is far too easy with a computer where they can move the paragraphs mm -hmm. around, because that is in lieu of planning almost. It's post-planning, moving things. In an exam, you really need to be doing it right first time. Ruth said she spent about 20 minutes planning for her essay before she did it, because she'd skip through the uh, um, reading and listening fairly quickly. <coughs> Whereas before, she said, oh, I finished really early. I sat there for half an hour. I said, you should have been planning. And in the actual exam itself, she said she'd actually uh, spent the requisite amount of time. So this, this planning tool, if, if, say, particularly if you're students or new teachers and you haven't been taught how to uh, do essays, my French teacher taught me this when I was 17 after he'd made me cry, the first essay I did in front of the class, thank you, Geoffrey, <laughs> was to short introduction, paragraphs, where you lead through to the most important point, leaving the strongest point fresh in the mind of the reader, concluding with no new points and just a summary of, of your opinions, basically, probably quite short. So that's the idea of an essay plan. Uh, and I've put in there the, uh, a sample essay plan and built-on essay for... Um, 
the most popular things there uh, in French. Oh, and one for German, a good violin in one. And um, the final thing to say about that, how do they know it's, re how, do, how does the student know it's relevant? Well, if you read through sample essays or you write essays with them, if they've planned it carefully from the title and are actually being relevant, you'll tend to see in that important introductory sentence in each paragraph a recurrence of words that are probably in the, in the title or synonyms of them and things that refer to it. So they need to be trained to take, analyse the title, plan it, put it into order and then to check the relevance to make sure things are referring back to um, the title in either exact words or synonyms, like the word social or something might maybe in it. So it's something like that is going to occur in each of those. That's a bit simplistic, really. It's probably not quite as easy as that, but uh, as a rough rule of thumb, I think. So, um, was there anything else? Yeah, I think the thing about pen, not computer, is important. I've done quite a few of these recently, and a lot of people have said, well, they're about two grades better if they do it at home on a computer with all the help they can get. You need to get them get them doing it in class in the amount of time, moving towards the amount of time. Okay. Lastly, very lastly, <coughs> there are some nice uh, director's commentaries on the film. There's also a really nice series called Secret de Tournage, which has got uh, things on Jeunet, uh, going back over Amélie ten years later, and Les Choristes Baratier. Um, and La Haine, there's a really nice, if you, I think I've got a link to it, but Analyse de Séquence of La Haine, the first 20 minutes. So um, doing these extra things, seeing what the directors say. You're building in the listening. So in all the uh, activities, you're practicing all the activities, hopefully. Building up the grammar and vocabulary, you're building up knowledge of the content, you're hopefully building up an analytical approach so that you can um, because you should be able to get them to detect the fact that they're putting in too much background stuff and they do that to please you, it's, it's nice but it doesn't get the marks and I suppose lastly check in subject verb um, ad, uh, noun adjective go through really thoroughly doing that sort of stuff okay so um, I think that's about all I've got to say. But if uh, I don't know where these sheets are with the details, and if anyone's still got them, I'll make sure you get a link to be able to access all of those. Uh, I've got examples of the resources I make available there for German films, French films for the WJEC. So, <coughs> but they're identified in those booklets as well. Okay. Any questions, anybody? Uh, I'll be around for a bit. So. Anybody has any questions? Free to ask. Okay. Oh, Thank you. Let's <laughs> 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 <laughs>